Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Before we kick off, I just want to go through a couple of quick housekeeping items. Your platform is fully customizable. You can expand or collapse any of the modules. You can drop your questions for Hashem in the questions module here in the platform and you'll be answering them in real time. This webinar will be available on demand later today. You can return over here in the next two weeks to watch it at any time. I'm thrilled to welcome our presenter, Hashem Alik, data scientist at John Snow Labs. Today, he will be here to discuss how John Snow Labs has developed multiple mod models utilizing BERT architectures with custom feature generation to achieve peer-reviewed SOTA accuracy on multiple benchmark data sets. This session will shed light on the background and motivation behind relation extraction techniques, real-world use cases, and practical code implementation. We are very excited to have you here today. So without further ado, over to you, Hashem. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Hashem. And today we'll be talking about relation extraction models and how we use them to understand documents at scale. Uh, this is also, uh, we have published a paper on this as well, which is uh, which was published in AAAI22, and this is just an extension on that. Uh, so what is relation extraction primarily? So uh, and so if you, if you look at this uh, screen, you would see two results. The first one is the NER result, which is you, you feed in a raw piece of text and we try to extract entities. This is an example of adverse drug event. Uh, I've taken this example because it's pretty uh, simple, but effective. So you see that every each and every entity is separate from each other. And we get drugs and we get uh, any adverse events, reactions. But we don't know that which drug is responsible for which reaction, because all of these entities are joint, are disjoint, right? And your model does not do that. It would only identify entities. We use relation extraction model as a layer on top of the NER model uh, to basically relate semantically which entities are responsible for another entity or how in what form are they related or in what form are they related. This is the, in this example, it's a binary relationship. So we just say, okay, out of these drugs, which drug is, cap is responsible for its specific reaction? Uh, so if you see the result, the second result, the one below it, you would notice that Zocor did not, was not responsible for any of the reactions. So we, so the model, we train the model to identify, to, to just say, okay, if, if the drug is responsible or it is not, it's a very binary relation model. And if you look at the results, it would say that Lipitor was the one that was responsible for fatigue, cramps, anxiety, depression, and sadness, but there were no after, there were no reactions or side effects after taking Zocor. So this tells uh, th this is how we relate. So now when we have this information, we feed in a piece of text. We now know that Lipitor was the one responsible for these reaction and not Zocor. So this is a layer on top of any R layer, in which we try to semantically relate entities. Now this relationship can be of multiple types. Uh, it could be a temporal relation as well. For example where we say one event happened after another event, because again, event extraction would be disjoint. The entities would not have any relation until we create a relation with a, with a model. Uh, the, these are all deep learning models. Uh, how we go about this problem is we have two, we have developed two basically approaches. One is our custom feature and en feature engineered uh, fully connected neural network. And the other one is BERT one. Uh, so our, the reason we do it two ways is uh, for scalability. So for simpler problems like this, uh, adverse re reactions where we have only one class, when we have where we have only two classes, binary classification, uh, we use the lighter model, which which is basically tuned for maximum speed, and we do compromise on, uh, you know, uh, accuracy but it is light and the way we designed it, we, we created, we tested and we created uh, bespoke features. Those features are like dependency tree of the sentence uh, and token spans between two entities. 
uh, etc. embeddings, either glove or bird-based embeddings. So this is one model. And the other one is the BERT one, which is an extension of one of the research papers. And in this case, we we set, we set the sequence length to 128 tokens to limit the sequence, to basically limit our attention span. And this model is actually uh, the best performing one. Not in, I mean, we, we have tested this and benchmarked this model on a bunch of data sets and we, we get best performance with this model. I'll show you right now. So yeah, these are all seven benchmark data sets. If you, I mean, the links can this, uh, to these data sets can be provided, but I2B2 data sets, uh, you know, temporal, clinical, DDI, drug drug interaction. You would also see here ADE and gene relations, pathology relations. These are all benchmark data sets. And the BioBird model that we have developed uh, is actually better than the existing state of the art models by, in some cases, by just a few percentages, but in some, in the other cases, by some great margin, like the PGR model and, uh, yeah, the ADE model. So uh, our BioBird model is state of the art as for now. Uh, so now that we've discussed that we have, uh, we know how to, the importance of basically relation extraction on top of NER, what are the applications? Uh, these applications, one, one that I've already shown you that, I mean, uh, you extract drugs or, and, they, and link them to their reactions. So in raw piece of text, you would know which drug is responsible for which reaction, but it's not just related to that. For example, this is a prescription or discharge note of a patient. So in this case, it's uh, we, we, when we do re, uh, relation extraction, you would see that now we're relating dosage and drugs and their frequencies and either form, uh, you know, what form oral or any other form. So this is, uh, if you look at this example, uh, he was seen by a discharge of 40 units of insulin. And so this insulin has is of 40 units, but the other type of insulin, its dosage is 12 units and the frequency is with meals and then metformin is two times a day. The benefit of this is we get to, uh, we get more granularity. If I were to simply extract this entire piece of chunk, let's say 12 units of insulin list pro with meals, I would have to divide that chunk down and see which exact drug was prescribed in which way. But now I have more granular chunks, more precise chunks, and we link them to get a structured output. So this is one application of parsing uh, prescriptions, discharge summaries, etc. And other application is because now we uh, have relations, we can identify dates and link them to certain lab results, procedures, that's the second example, uh, and that allows us to get to put us to put the entire timeline of a patient on chart. So, for example, in this case, if there were multiple summaries of a patient over one admission, uh, and we would process each and every report, we would extract dates for each and every one of them, and we would extract test results. For example, calcium score in this case, and the problem and that patient was, let's say, cyst. So on 2021, this was the result. On, uh, sorry, on 1st Jan, then on 13th Jan, the result changed based on new tests, et cetera. And on 23rd Jan, the results got changed again. And we can, uh, we can then deduce whether it's, uh, th there's any improvement or any action needs to be taken. But essentially what we've done is collected multiple reports and put them on a timeline just because we can now relate entities. We can find dates, we can find procedures, and we can say, okay, this date, this procedure was performed on this, uh, on this date. This helps us do this. Uh, another example of this, another application that is actually a real world project is uh, uh, processing full fledged reports and generating knowledge graphs. So yeah, everybody, uh, we talk a lot about knowledge graphs, but we, but we don't realize is knowledge graphs without relations is nothing. Relations uh, play, a key, uh, play the most pivotal or most important role 
uh, while generating a knowledge graph. And this is what uh, this is the evidence actually. So, for example, we have a piece of uh, a, a report in this case. It's a radiology report. And uh, by the way, this example is where all of these things come together and you get a single knowledge graph. It would, in this, we will see dates linking, procedures linking, body parts linking, all that kind of stuff. So if you look at this example and this uh, this, uh, this radiology report, we would see, it, okay, we have first Jan as the date and CT scan was performed, but the technique of that CT scan was multi-slice. And where was CT scan performed? On chest. And what was its finding, pleural fusion? And what was the measurement of pleural fusion? It's 10 cross 9.8 in the lower lobe of the left lung. So the body part is lung and its laterality is left and its sub body part or subsection is lobe. And then another cyst was observed in both kidneys. So if you put all of this in a graph like this, you would see that the primary procedure, which is which is in the center, the CD scan. Uh, this is the primary procedure. Now we link them, we link this procedure to findings. In this case, we have two basic findings. One is pleural effusion, the other is cyst, which is the second sentence. If we take the first finding, pleural effusion, we would now link the measurement with it and the unit of the measurement. So 10, 9.8. And then we have the location of the perfusion body part now how do we know this relationship type as well it's not just relating it's the relationship type as well we know that because now we have two different entity types lung is a body part and perfusion is a finding so the relationship between them is finding and body part so we know the type as well uh, and then we have sub body parts and laterality lobe and left lobe left lobe of the lung so this is how you, you would see that we create a hierarchy with just deciding on how to create relations. And this is the power of relations. We're not simply saying that CD scan was performed on a chest and pure fusion and the, the finding in the lung was this. No, we are going very, very detailed now that there was pure fusion in the lung, in left lobe and its measurement was there. Similarly, a cyst was, was observed in kidney. So this is the power of relations. Uh, and we now have the data as well. We also say, okay, the technique of this was multi-slice and we have coronary calcium score, which is 230. The primary body part was chest. You see that we have multiple body parts, but, but this is where, where I'm coming at. We have multiple body parts, but the primary body part on which CD was performed was chest. The findings of pillar fusion was not in chest, but rather in lung. Now this is up to the relation extraction model to decide which exact body part is linked to which finding or procedure. So this is how we create a knowledge graph at the end. This is, if you, uh, to convert this into a JSON, you would get a completely structured data. So the, the magic in this is you feed in an unstructured piece of text, a large report, and at the end you get complete structured data with a hierarchy. So you can do a bunch of analysis, take decisions, etc. Uh, in Spark NLP, we have multiple models uh, for relation extraction. Like I said earlier, I showed you already uh, RE underscore ADE, which is the adverse drug one, but we have a bunch of them. And every every model is designed for certain conditions and certain entity pairs. When I say entity pairs, in the case of ADE, the entity pair is reaction and drug. In the case of body part and procedure, the, these are the two entity types, body part and, and procedure or symptom. So the idea behind mul having multiple models is to uh, avoid confusion within the model itself because the main ideology behind this is to use lighter models so we divide uh, entities based on overlapping between them. If two entities overlap, then we don't put them in the same model. And we, we end up with, for, till now we have roughly 10 or more than 10 models. For example, the body part procedure test is, would tell you relations between body part and a procedure, just like what we saw in the previous slide, uh, you know, CT and chest. The test res result date would be 
for example, if we say here, then this is the test and this is the date. If there's any result, we could also link that to date. So this would be that model would do that. Body part problem, just like body part uh, procedure, body part problem is this lung and pleural fusion. Uh, body part directions, lung, lower left lobe. This is the model for that. Um, and then we have some, these are binary classification models. Then we have some uh, multi-classification uh, models as well. Like in the case of RE underscore clinical, it would not only tell you if the drug or a diagnosis is related, but it would also tell you if a treatment has cured a, a symptom or it has aggravated a symptom. So in this case, we have roughly seven different classes and we get results based on the two entities. So test and test result and drug and symptom. So we can say, okay, this drug cured a symptom or not. So instead of binary, we now have multiple classes over here. And then we also have models for gene for relating genes, chemical proteins, et cetera. And the last one, the a very powerful model is the prosology one, you know, relating drug and all of its things, form, dosage, et cetera. So in this talk, what we have, what we try to, uh, the main point of this and the main uh, motivation behind this is only relying on relation on uh, named entity recognition models would, uh, uh, would basically, it doesn't allow us to go into details and extract or link entities, which is important as we've seen. Uh, we simply, simple disjoint entities, they're good for analysis, but they don't get, they don't portray the full picture for, for which we have, to, we have developed basically two different models out of which the BERT one is actually the SODA. And we have also seen the importance and use cases of extracting of these relation of of these relations, right? We're able to generate knowledge graphs. We are even. Let me go back and show you one other thing. So there is one interesting use cases, and that is when you try to resolve these codes to these symptoms and procedures to codes. So if I only try to resolve CD scan, I would get a very general code. Uh, when I say code, I'm talking about CPT or ICD codes. In the case of CD scan, it would be a CPT code. But if I say CD scan of chest, then I should get a more precise code, just like cyst of kidney. If I just say cyst, the code would be of cyst unspecified. That's no good value to me because the cyst happened in the kidney. So relating these two entities now allows me to get a more precise code because now I know that these that in the hierarchy, cyst has a body part kidney and I can generate a more enriched chunk and feed that to the resolver model and get better results. So this is again, one very cool and useful application of relations. And now we'll see how this, all of this is actually, uh, all of this actually happens in the form of code because we've made it easier to, this sounds a bit scary, but we've made it easier to use these models. Uh, you just need to run a couple of lines of code. I'll show you, you can even do it in like, 10, uh, you know, three lines. So let's go to the coding section. By the way, these are all, uh, these notebooks that, uh, the notebook that I'm running, all of these notebooks are available here. Spark NLP workshop, healthcare. Uh, all of these notebooks are here. If you go here and search for relations, you would find a bunch of relation extraction notebooks. And and you just need to get started. You just need trial license. You can go here, open up any notebook, run the few, run, run the first cell, upload your JSON key, and the next cell it would install and get the setup ready for you, and then you can start exploring. But over here, if I show you how easy it is to use these models, you'd see that I have a pre-trained pipeline for adverse for, uh, adverse drug uh, events explain doc ADE. And this pipeline contains NER models, assertion models, relation extraction models in a single pipeline. So you don't need to create a custom pipeline. You just write, or you just execute this line of code. It will download and you can see the stages. And afterwards you just pass in your text. This is the text. 
you pass in do dot full annotate and it would give you the result so in this we also have a classifier this is a very uh, elaborate uh, pipeline we have classifier models like i said ner's etc so i can check the results of each and every stage so for example if i say i want to see re result of uh, let's say ner charms yep I can get chunks, right? Fatigue, the type is ADE. So these are the chunks. And if I want to look at the relations, I would just do uh, this. And this would give me relations. And we also have a display library, which basically makes it easy for you to, because this is a data frame that you need to parse. So if you don't want to do that and want quick, uh, you know, want to iterate over quickly, you can just use a visualizer. It would visualize things for you. This is a pre-trained pipeline that, as you can see, is just 10, less than 10 lines of code. But if you want to create your own pipeline, you know, like I showed you, we have 10 different models. If you want to play with different models and see how, how does that work, you can write like this piece of code. We have trainings available for this as well. But the idea behind this is um, you, you run a basic NER model, you get dependency structure of the document, we use this dependency structure to basically filter out uh, relation pairs, not, not only but relation pairs, but like, uh, you know, probable or candidate relation pairs, because if I have too many, for example, in this example, we only have two different and drugs and four different ADEs. But if in, a, in an example, if there were many drugs and many ADEs, it would explode exponentially very quickly. So we use dependency structure to basically reduce all that stuff down and only allow or only classify eligible pairs. And this helps us on the computation cost, but this is how you can simply You can simply load up or create a custom pipeline and uh, create, create relation, uh, relation extraction pipelines and uh, practice with it. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And uh, like I said, the on-demand uh, will be available. And I uh, hope you all have a wonderful day.